Hey everyone, and welcome to another installment of Split Set. You know, I, I can't do this anymore. See this? That is a script. Well, it's a cheap tablet, really, but... Oh, wait, shit, no. <laughs> Still need this. Um, it's a tablet, uh, but it has my scripts on it. I usually write up these little scripts and bits and yada, yada, yada. But, you know, I've recently received some feedback that I sound a little rehearsed. I sound a little practiced, a little bit too polished. Not real, not genuine. Get on it, up on it, ride it, my pony. Shoo-hoo, that's bad. See, this is why I do the scripts. I tend to go a little off the rails if allowed but you know maybe maybe that's what you guys want you don't want the guy that's getting every single little bullet point that's the whole reason why i do the scripts to make sure that i don't leave any point uncovered but let's try something new let's try something a little bit unscripted a little bit country a little bit rock and roll this is what happens when i don't have a script as always remember to like comment and subscribe and give that bell a little ding so that you're notified whenever I publish a new video. A quick little uh, wrist check -a Today I am wearing the Aragon Divemaster 42 with the full loom. I got this on a NATO from, I believe I got this from Cheapest NATO Straps. I'm not sure if, it, yeah, no, it was from Cheapest NATO Straps. Um, yeah, so link in the description and up here in the corner for my review of this watch. Not here today to talk to you about that guy though. Here today to talk to you about this guy. The Aragon Caprice. Now this is a very special watch within my collection because the, Ar the Aragon Caprice is a fully mechanical watch. See that? No rotor, right? Look at this, look at this, check this out. Look at this. Look at the gears. Ah, look at them turning. Let me get this closer up here. Look at that. Oh God, you're filthy. Look at that, look at it turning. That's amazing, I, I love it, you know? And that is one of the things I love most about what mechanical watches, is just seeing all the innards and, and just, God, this is, this is a marvel of humanity, right? The fact that we are still enamored by these completely obsolete, completely pointless little trinkets. But I digress, see, this is why I need a script. Let's, let's go ahead and let's talk about this guy. Um, I don't have a script, but I do have bullets because otherwise this is just going to be like 40 minutes of me just rambling on and on and going on different tangents and we and nobody wants that. Anyway, it's it's no secret. I'm a fan of Aragon. This is like, I think my fourth one that I have or my third one. No, my fourth one. The construction and just the, the, the value for money that you get with these Aragons, it's just, I love it. Now, mostly Aragon are known for their divers, you know. These big old chonguses, like 55 millimeter divers. And, uh, you know, that's, that's fine. That has its audience, right? But the lesser known for Aragon are their pilot watches. And they do have a few of them. And I think they're really worth talking about. Because just look at this watch. This is gorgeous. It has that, um, they call it sand. It's like this golden sunburst. And just, it's great. This being a pilot watch... The dimensions are very pilot watchy, if that's even a word. We got a 43, almost 44 millimeter diameter. We got a thickness of 13 on the button. Look to lug is 49, almost 50. Okay, make your mind calipers. It's 50. And, you know, you're not going to want for straps because this thing takes 22 millimeter straps. So you can change them all day long if you want. I've mostly been wearing this guy on a bun strap, and I think that's where it shines the most. It really comes to life on this brown bun strap. The case, the fixed bezel, the signed crown, those are all 316L stainless steel, as well as the signed buckle. You may have noticed it is all polished. The only variation whatsoever is a Hit a little of bead blasting there so that they could get the little plane on there. I love that plane, by the way. It's back here on the case back as well. 
So it's just a little teensy little bit of blasting there, but everything else is high polish and it is just an absolute fingerprint and smudge magnet. You would think that I didn't wear my gloves today on purpose so I could show that to you. No, I just can't find them. They'll probably be back in the next video or maybe not, who cares? One thing that I like about this is Aragon usually sign their crowns with like a little um, model of an atom, I think, or I don't know what the hell that is. But um, in this case, they went with a little plane here, and I really think it's very clever. The crystal is K1 hardened mineral, um, and it's marketed as being more resistant to scratches, but it's, it's, not, it's not sapphire. So you should really still be careful with this. Now, I mentioned it a little while ago. I just, I am enamored by this dial. I honestly just, I love the way it catches the light. I love the way it transitions. I love that sunburst effect. Um, it has a sub dial here, which has like a little bit of a, of a frame around it. That's for your small seconds hand. Other than that, I mean, all you got is just the Aragon logo at 12 and that's it. It's uh, it's printed, not applied. And that's it as far as, as text on that. Oh, it has a, it, uh, I forget. It has a teeny tiny mechanical 17 joules here. This is powered by a Siegel 3600. This is a clone of an Eta movement. It's uh, Eta 6497. And I'll throw up an image here. They are pretty much twins, right? So I don't expect this to run like an Eta because it's not, it's a Siegel. But you know, I've I've gotten pretty good. I've gotten pretty good performance out of it. I'm not complaining. Even, even though it's, even though it's a, a, a cheap clone, because that's what it is, um, I still, I love the way that they, that it has like this Geneva striping here. Uh, the camera isn't really doing it justice. It looks really good in real life, in natural light. And I also love the way that it has these little blue screws. Seiko usually do have that. Um, they have that also on their ST19 movements. Those are blue, painted blue, not blued. So not thermally blue. You're not going to get that at this price point. But, you know, just the contrast between the blue screws and the jewels, it's just, I sometimes just want to wear this watch like that, just so I can see, you know, the movement rather than the dial. Although, again, the dial is just, ah, chef's kiss. The watch does come on this uh, vintage style, um, I think this is called Pebble Print, if I'm not mistaken, um, which, eh, not a fan of. That's why I've been using it, like I said, on a uh, bun strap, a um, brown leather bun strap I got from, got it from Strapsco. So the, the strap, eh, I don't hate it, don't love it either. I do, li I do like the double stitching here, but eh, it's not really something to write home about. I just, ah, prints, man, I'm not, I'm, ugh, prints, I'm just not really into them, like, at all. Be it crop print, lizard print, um, alligator print, I just, eh, not a fan of it. There's a lot to like about this watch. You know, it checks a lot of boxes for me. The look, the size. It's got an interesting movement. This is the only hand-wound uh, movement that I have that is just, uh, you know, regular three-hander. I also have a Siegel 1963 that's hand-wound, but, you know, um, other than that, this is just, it's very unique in my collection because of that. The dial is nice, clean, legible. The crown is easy to operate. Um, it's a push-pull, not a screw-down. So just, look. Even without being a uh, screw-down, it still has 100 meters of water resistance, which is great, you know. You're not going to go diving with this. You're not going to go swimming necessarily with this. But it's good to know that if it does get wet and the crown is properly popped in place, you, you, you're not gonna, you shouldn't have a heart attack over it. You know, it should resist some degree of submersion if it were to happen. The other thing I like is um, the indices. The indices are kind of like obelisk shaped and that's very unique too. I don't have any watches that have indices quite like this. The indices are applied. Um, it, the, you got a truncated one over here to accommodate for that small second style. And uh, you got these, um, I think these are called leaf style hands. And just all of it, it has a great cohesive look to it. Like I said, the crown is easy to operate, very easy to grab. Just listen to, let me, let me. I love, it's very satisfying to operate, to wind it, to get that little, that cranking sound, that, that just, it's very easy to, to operate and get that, that, I just love it. It's very satisfying to get that winding, cranking 
sound. I don't know what to call it. Those are those are the things that I really, really like. Uh, it leaves very little to be desired. Now, what do I wish were different? Well, there's actually a, a few uh, a few things that I would change if I were to make this watch myself. Number one, and first and foremost, is just, it's kind of a trend with Aragon at this point, at least with the models that I've received. It's ah, high polish everywhere. Just, there's scratch magnets, there, there's smudge magnets. It's a cost saving measure, I get it. If you only have to apply one finish to your watch, that's time that's saved. You don't have to use a different machine for different parts. I get it, okay, but it's just, it's kind of boring, first and foremost, and second, if you're going to do just one finish, do a brushed finish. That is the one that hides scratches the easiest. That is the one that's the least of a smudge magnet. Now, uh, the positioning of the small seconds is another thing that I would change. Um, and, you know, the, to, the, to an extent that's limitations of the movement selection and whatnot. Um, I, I would much rather have the small seconds at six. I think it looks nice and balanced there. It looks sexy. Over here at nine, it's just kind of like... like there you go. <laughs> Someone chucked a small seconds on there. And it's eh, not, not, not really something uh, in terms of positioning that I'm a fan of. Yeah, and while I'm on the subject of that small seconds, when you have a small seconds, part of the fun of it is having like different finishing on the dial within the small seconds. You know, the most common thing that you see here is like concentric circles. That would have just made this so unique. Instead, you know, it has the same, it's exactly the same Sunburst finishing. So you can tell that what they did was that they just pricked the, a hole in there and, and slapped a ring to, to like make a dedicated space for it. But that's pretty much all they did. You know, there wasn't really much thought put into the positioning and, and the application of that small second, if you ask me. My final gripe with this watch is the loom. You know, it's, it's not a diver, I should say. It's not a diver, so high loom isn't really something that might necessarily be, you know, a, a linchpin of a, of a pilot style watch. Although, you know, an argument can be made for that. If you go like into like history of pilots, you know, they need to be able to see them in the darkness of night or whatever. So, eh. You, you might you might make an argument for loom being important on a pilot watch, but it's not uh, as strong an argument as it is for a diver, right? So I get it. The loom might not necessarily be the most important thing on this, but at the same time, you know, it's not something to write home about. The, the loom on this is really just kind of eh. It's, it's there. It, it's not bad. It's just there. It gets the job done. My final thoughts on this, the Caprice is just straight up fun. Honestly, I know that um, that I may have sounded like I was complaining about it a lot, but you know these are things that I that I picked up on, and, and honestly, they don't detract from my enjoyment of this watch. By the way, um, in terms of quality control issues, I didn't notice a single one. You know, everything on this watch works perfectly. The movement is great. Um, the finishing is great. Uh, application, everything is straight here. So I didn't pick up on any um, quality control issues. But if you see any, you know, aside from that thing, that was me. I don't know when, but that was me. <laughs> if you see any, uh, let me know in the comments down below, right? But uh, I, I don't see any issues with this. Like I was saying for my final thoughts, the Caprice is just straight up fun. Honestly, it's a very fun watch to own and operate. Uh, the few things that I do have a problem with, like I said earlier, they do not detract from my enjoyment of this watch whatsoever. If you like this one, there are a couple ways you can get a hand, your hands on it. And it does come in a ton of different variations. It comes in different solid dial colors it comes in a bunch of skeleton dials it really i would suggest you give this watch a, a, a fair shot it's just tons of fun to own now it is available for, at any given point between 200 and 250 dollars on the aragon uh, website but with aragon you know there's always a good idea to kind of stalk their website and see you know what's going on because for a for a hot minute you could get this for like 70 bucks with the purchase of a T100 Regeneron, I think that's what it's called. It's a skeleton dial. So you could slap one of these on for a, an extra 70 bucks. So just, it's always a good idea to keep your eye on the Aragon website because you never know when they're going to be doing a stupid deal like that. What do you think of the Caprice? I would love to get your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, what do you think of this new style? You know, if, if, um, if you like this style versus the you know, strict and structured, scripted style, you know, you know, different people might like different things, but 
this was more fun for me to shoot. I started and stopped a lot less than when I was trying to follow a script. Normally I have like 40, 30 to 40 minutes of, of footage for uh, what ends up being a 12 minute video. Right now, um, as of this moment, I have 22 minutes of raw footage now. So it's a lot quicker for me to film. It's a lot easier for me to film. So if you like this style, you know, uh, definitely I can keep doing it. You may have noticed there's not as many memes being put in there. We're keeping it fast and loosey-goosey. I do tend to plan out the memes in advance and the GIFs. So now I'm just kind of going to be adding them after the fact. There's still going to be a lot of editing, especially because YouTube viewers love jump cuts. Anyway, if you like this style, let me know. If you hate this style, let me know. If you think I should uh, go die in a fire, let me know. Leave a comment. It's all engagement and YouTube loves it. Every time you leave a comment, YouTube shows my video to more people. So go ahead and hate on by, suckers. <laughs> anyway, that'll be it for now. Stay safe, mask up, be kind to each other, because life can change in a split second. Whoa, you made it all the way to the end of the video, really? That's amazing, even I don't make it all the way to the end of the video. Well, if you like what you saw, click here for another video and click here to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ring that bell so you're notified whenever I publish a new video. Thanks for watching.